Ma, what's a disfigured slave doing in my lair? Come on, slave, show me your tits. I don't fear dogs. Why don't you bark for me, elf? Go on, bark. Ha! <laughs> How funny that you'd think I'd answer to a lizard's pet. That's what your scar means, doesn't it? You do tricks on command and sleep in a kennel, isn't that right? Why don't you bark for me, elf? Go on, bark. You're embarrassing yourself. Leave before you hurt yourself, too. Hey! Hey, you! Let me see what you've got under there. Go on, go on. Show me your tits. Still opening that mouth of yours, are you? Careful with that. I quite like the look of it. How awkward. See, the thing is... Just stop. No one cares what you have to say. Oh. Why are you still speaking? How awkward. See, the th Until next time. Hey! Hey, you- Pecker! Wait. Do you even have a pecker? If you want treasure, go find a mirror. Now get your glittering bones away from me. Go clack and chatter at someone else. Oh, please. As if your lonely old bones could do anything to hurt me. Now get your glittering bones away. Until next time. Well, don't you look like hell? Swallowed something that doesn't agree with you? Tell me, was it a demon's nice, big pecker? Let me speak to whoever's really in charge or shut up and once it's strong enough you'll be little more than a meat carcass for it to use however it pleases oh you poor thing you really think i'm going to answer to you don't you we both know who's really in charge don't we and once it's strong till next dear gods look at you not even a beard like that can hide that sort of ugly. Why is your beard so big, Dwarf? Is it to make up for your teeny, tiny... Pecker? Are you still talking? Sorry, I don't speak, dog. Now, get out of here, and try not to break anything on your way out, you filthy beast. Oh, be quiet, you animal. I almost feel bad for you. Now, get out. Till next... Ha! <laughs> Look at you! How'd you get that red skin, lobster? Sit too long in the sun? Or do you paint yourself whore red every day because you think it makes you look special? What else makes you special, lizard? Your eensy weensy Pecker? My, my, lobster. How very presumptuous of you to ask anything of me. I hear all kinds of rumours, you know. I know who you are. If you went back to the ancient empire, they'd kill you on the spot, or put you in shackles and use you for a rent boy. Isn't that right? Say, why don't we practice? Oh, how totally precious. You think you scare me. If you went back to the ancient empire... Ta-ta! Oh, look at you. Tell me. Do you always slink around with the air of a child caught drawing naughty pictures in church? What are you so afraid of, lad? Daddy's bell? Or is it Daddy's... Pecker? Oh, I really don't feel like chatting now. Why don't you go home to your wife and kids? Maybe follow your grease trail back here another day. Give them my regards. Ha! <laughs> You're cute when you think anyone should take you seriously. Give them my regard until we meet again. Ha! Here today, gone tomorrow. An the illusion. This fellow must be quite proud of himself. Huh. 
clever. I tell you to leave? Wasn't I clear that you're not welcome here? Oh, you can't teach a fool anything. Pathetic boy. This isn't some game. In what world does treasure simply appear from on high? That was even easier than I thought. <laughs> Poor. Shit, you'll have to solve. I thought you looked clueless, all right? Thing is, it's about the letters, isn't it? One for each thing. Easy. Yeah, sure. Hope you don't die. Well, nice to meet you too. Rude.
You see yourself in the mirror. It's quite a sight. You come to find. You come to search. But you won't find the way. A pity. I cannot help you. I only give the questions. I do not answer them. Brachus has willed it. Trompdoy must abide. You have met the unfortunate guardian of this vault. You are kinder to him than fate has been. Do you wish to move forward? Listen closely and make your attempt. Brachus is a bloody, rotten, thieving, very, very awful fellow. Some even call him a cur. A cur is. You know nothing. Guess again. Listen closely. Brachus is a bloody, rotten, thieving, very, very awful fellow. You know nothing. You dullard. You lack conviction. Slowly, grave. As you pick up the ring, you feel a cold, dark pain shoot up your arm. Your mind itches. You don't hear, but feel a whisper in your ear. It tells you to slip the ring onto your finger. it all this way. He trembles and seems to shudder with a quiet sob. I'm cursed, you know. Bloody Brachus bound me here to protect his vault. He has my soul in that jar just there. And I can't leave without it. As long as the jar stays unbroken, I can never truly die. I don't rightly know. This was the Source King's way. Befriend you, then destroy you. 
I was a fool to expect I'd be an exception. His favor was intoxicating. That's no excuse, but it is the reason. Really? You... you would? He drops to his knees before you and grabs onto your feet with both hands, head hanging. Thank you. His head and hands are missing, severed as if by a sword. You can't tell if this was meant to be symbolic somehow, or a mere act of vandalism. Get those weapons into shape. We'll need them. And? Have you found them? Did you bring the soul jars? She stops dead as you pull the jar out of your backpack. Her voice trembles as she speaks. You entered the vault. You, please, give that to me. Give it to me now. You don't understand. You couldn't understand. Please, I need it. Please give it to me. She reaches greedily for the jar, tearing the cap off. You see a green glowing light emerge from the jar, enveloping Gratiana. By Armadia, I feel... I feel... wet. Oh, Goddess, I can feel your tears upon my face. I... I suppose you deserve to know. Before I knew Armadia's grace, I was a very different person. I was the concubine of Gracchus Rex. But more than his lover, I was his partner. I discovered his power to feed on the source of others, and I allowed it to... No, I made it happen. As his strength grew, so too did mine. There is nothing you cannot do when you sit on the lap of a powerful king. And I did it all. But power changes a man, as he changes his nation. Bracchus grew paranoid, angry, murderous. I tried not to see it. I told myself it was fine, that the stronger he became, the stronger I was. What stupid lies. I gave him more and more, trying to win him back to me. I offered him the source of whole villages. He devoured them and demanded more. The lands outside were once green and beautiful, until I came, until I turned them over to him. Now all's poison, and the dead are restless. Armadia is merciful in her love. I found this shrine while hunting a band of wizards. I found the goddess weeping for her children, and I wept too. She pauses for a moment. If she had eyes, you're sure she'd be wiping them. Through Armadia, I saw my sins, and I could bear it no longer. I threw myself from the cliff at the entrance. I tried to rid the world of my evil, but Bracchus would not allow it. He brought me back from the Hall of Echoes, locked my soul away, and demanded my obedience. 
even in death he commanded me. I spent far too little time there. It was a strange place, but there was peace. A peace I never knew before. Perhaps someday. For now, the world lies at my feet, and I have an eternity to see it, to praise Armadia's name. But first... She drops the now empty soul jar to the ground, smashing it to pieces with her foot. You have my thanks, sister. She starts to speak, but chokes back a sob instead. Thank you. I don't... I can't... I've never known such kindness. Thank you for everything. May you walk forever in Armadia's grace. My eternal thanks. Yes, sir. Blessed Armadia, grant these soldiers your protection. I pray you will strengthen. The stone gargoyle trains glistening agate eyes upon you. It's you are not Bracus. Poise it open. The stone gargoyle trained... You are not Bracchus Rex. Welcome home, Master. Your inmates have long awaited your return, Your Highness. Welcome back. Stern eyes and a sterner face stare into your very soul. Under the inescapable gaze, you begin to shiver uncontrollably. Another crawling rat, tracking your stinking paws beneath my nose. Vermin are not tolerated in my house. Be gone! Do not doubt my power.
please! Help! If flames will burn me forever! Invasive maneuvers, Quackers! You're in the wrong place, then, I fear. This island's a cauldron of suffering, right through to the roots in the ground. You know of Bracchus Rex, I assume? The figure nods grimly. Mm, he did terrible things while trying to master Source, bend it to his will. I had a part in this, I must admit. Perhaps I deserve the flames. No, no, I was a scholar, a librarian. Bracchus sought the secrets of Source, but he had no patience for sifting through ancient scrolls and tablets. I unearthed knowledge of a great power within those texts, a great and terrible power, one that Bracchus coveted above all. The figure's ruined flesh curls into a scowl. Long destroyed, surely. Bracchus wanted no one to have that knowledge. He fed me to the flame so I'd keep my secret. He'd have no qualms about burning a few scrolls. The figure slowly shakes his head. I will not say. I spoke of it once and was damned to eternal hellfire for it. Were I to speak of it again, I could damn the whole world. Bracchus must have failed. Had he not, the world as you know it would be gone. What I learned of could still be out there. I will not speak of it. I won't risk having another Bracchus discovering it. Good! Were I to say any more, I'd only put you in danger. Leave this awful place. Go live your life. Forget about all this. It is best left buried. And stranger, thank you for freeing me. I had doubted this moment would ever come. I need not wonder. The Empire abides, never strayed from its course. It is eternal as we. Verily, I'm... As you enter the room, you see three skeletons sitting around a table, cards in hand. They creak and turn to stare at you. A beating heart. Does Bracchus need us once more, Jailer? Are we finally to be freed? You're not one of Bracchus's brood. You're not Gratiana's pet. Then why do you disturb us? The flesh yearns for our secrets. Did I not say that word would spread of our genius? Even after the maggots took your tongue, you still talk too much. Silence your jaw. That witch, a priestess. 
is no more godly than the mites in my skull. I've never seen a more treacherous smile than on her full, voluptuous lips. Canst thou think of nothing else? How many centuries have I endured hearing you remember your conquests? Hey, at least I didn't have to raise mine. That was not but a whisper on the wind. A vile rumour. Oh, it coughs. I will not sit by as it breathes thus. It mocks us with the very air passing twixt its lips. The shambling creatures lay down their cards and push back their chairs. Indeed, but we'll soon put an end to that. And then, freedom. Worse than this? Can such a thing be true? Thou art fortunate. When I still wore scales, I would have cut you down without a call. But time brings perspective, and perspective brings mercy. You are permitted to live, Magus. I was about to trade. Our deaths for your life? You walk out of here and leave us your word that you'll destroy our soul jobs. Trusting flesh to do bones work? It seems foolish, but very well. Mark the location. Why are you still here? You have a vault to uncover and a soul... The skeleton turns and spits, producing a gob of dust that wafts slowly to the ground. Brachus's whore, and more besides. She helped his rise to power, feeding him the source of the innocent as she went. She were a canny lass, no question. Treacherous and deceitful. She could lie better than any. She murdered countless innocents. Women, children, families, towns. Her blood ran colder than mine. This island was a research facility. Safe place for him to research and for us to test his weapons. You didn't never see him without a book in his hand. Always reading about some ancient race. He weren't the sharing kind, but he found something good in there. The results of his research allowed us to recreate Persian ones based on an ancient design he found. Much of our research was built off what that which went before. He was convinced that great ancient knowledge lay in this land. Greater intellects than mine. The fool's madness knew no bounds. Here, did I ever... Why, he's still here. Do you ever wonder if your lizard empire still stands? The soldier stands on its plinth, glowing softly. You see, or rather, you feel a far-off land. Frozen breath hangs in the air. Pine needles brush your cheeks, and in your arms you can feel a weight. A body, dead. But you have hope. Your vision swims. You're older, but perhaps not wiser. You march at the head of a shambling host, the enemies of Bracchus Rex melting before you. The scene twists again. Now Bracchus stands before you, a beautiful woman at his side. You lash out in treasonous rage, but cold arms bind you. You're sealed away in a tower. Your screams fill the darkness. You feel a jolt and open your eyes to see the soul jar before you, lying still in the vault. Your hand falls from the jar and grips the pillar as you try to calm your ragged breathing. Never strange. The necromancer's memories fade to black, but the feelings remain. They may have been a necromancer, but they did not feel evil. Misguided, perhaps. No one deserves the fear and pain I felt in that vision. Not even a necromancer. One must wonder how many more lives they took. How much misery the scum caused. Anyone who marches at the head of an undead host deserves whatever punishment they get. Anyone who marches at the head of an undead host is... Ugh, the memories of a necromancer. What could be more vile? The dance macabre, yes, I recall. The jar stands before you. A human spirit slips from the ruins of the jar. Decked in necromancer robes, she turns to you, bows, and starts to fade away to nothing. Oh, my eternal face, young one. Oh, tiny death. Still here? Don't you have a... This jar glitters and glows. From within, you think you can make out the distant sound of laughter. With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a scene in a tavern. You see a dwarf in the center of the room, joking us all around raw with laughter. 
all bar the zombies who are slavishly serving food and drink. The door opens and a tall, beautiful woman stalks into the room. She's flanked by heavily armed guards. You can't make out her words, but see the fear in the dwarf's eyes. The dwarf mutters a word and the undead lurch towards the intruder, but are cut down like wheat. The dwarf tries to run, pushing her friends into the woman's path, but is grabbed before she can escape. As she's dragged away to a tower, you hear her cursing Bracus Rex and his whore. Even when she's thrown inside and the door sealed, you can still hear her shouts. You pull your hand away from the jar. The jar shatters like glass, but a spirit rises from the shards like smoke. The ghost of a dwarf, bedecked in necromancer robes, winks and blows you a kiss before slowly fading to nothing. Thank you. My death waits. The vision fades. She must have been acting against Bracchus Rex for him to have come for her like that. Honestly, making the dead do menial work sounds kinder than having the living do it. Being locked in a tower was more kindness than any necromancer deserves. Keeping the dead as slaves? What a disgusting display. She deserved every punishment she got. Keeping the dead as... Ugh, I've rarely seen such cowardice on display. The jar on the plinth before you seems ancient but is in surprisingly good condition. It's covered in pictograms that you can't understand, but you're sure you just saw one of them move. The pictograms spin to life, and you're dragged into a dream. You see the lizards of the ancient empire turning their backs on you, casting you out into the wilderness. As you roam, the human apes turn away from you, all but one. One smiles, one opens his arms, one says he'll take you home. Bracchus Rex, he promises power for a price. He picks off your golden scales, one by one, stripping you down to the bone. He promised you a crown, but all you got were shackles. You try to fight, try to reclaim what's yours, but a woman takes you by the hand and leads you to a tower. He promised he'd take me home, you cry. You are home, she smiles as she seals the door. This is where you belong. Your hand drops away from the soul jar, your skin prickling. In the back of your mind, you hear a small, scared voice whimper before fading to nothing. You see a shape emerge from the ruins of the broken jar, a lizard in the finest necromancer robes. It grudgingly nods at you as it starts to fade from the mortal realm. Farewell to flesh. Farewell to bone. Farewell. The long-dead lizard's visions fade. I can't help but sympathize with him. He just wanted to go home. One can't help but have a bit of sympathy. Who wouldn't want to return to their home? <laughs> what he did shames his people. No amount of loneliness excuses wickedness. He helped a monster for selfish reasons. No amount of lo This is the price of pride and greed. The villain got what he deserved. Among the long crumbled remains of the temple that must have once sheltered his shrine, the stone effigy of a god seems to invite you to put your hands in his. approach a decrepit well and stare down into its toothless black mouth. No sooner has your head crossed the rim than weak voices begin to echo from the depths. Thirst, dry throats, drink, water, water. The 
well is now filled to the brim with fresh, cool water, but what it has brought to the surface quickly evaporates any wish you may have had to quench your own thirst. You see the tangled remains of three corpses, a mixed mass of bones and skin from which three skulls protrude. They address you in unison, their voices a drone-like blend. We thank you for the water. We bless you for the water. We thank you for the end of torment. The king. The king. Bracchus Rex. The madman with the crown. Truth speakers. Wish granters. Dream readers. But we displease the king. The truth we spoke. His fortune told. No divinity would he be. And so he entangled our bodies and cursed our throats. Smoked the brothers of Baladur. We thank you for the water. We bless you for the water. We ask you for a fair. The fair. The tomb. The levy. The people of Baladur must be buried with coin. Coin for the path keeper that leads the dead to the kingdom beyond. Spare us coin. Grant us coin. The more you pay, the further the path keeper takes us. Ancient things cling to our bones like earth to roots. They will be yours for coin. Sweet savior. Friend of death and fiend of life. How much will you give? We thank you again. We bless you again. The wealth of the depths is yours. Path keeper, keep us. Path keeper, guide us. To the long-awaited kingdom we will go. Laden with the burden of the coin you gave them, the brothers of Balador sink back to the bottom of the well. Whether they will find their kingdom or languish in the dark, wet depths forever, you cannot foretell. Careful now, that's a trap. Careful, I've spotted a trap. You don't look lost at all. Sarcastic me, not at all. I'd never be sarcastic me. Oh, no, not in the least. I do not. I sound perfectly normal, obviously. The rat gives you a desperate look. Help me. The rat opens its mouth to speak. Can't say anything. So it nods its head, then shakes its head, then nods it again. The rat tries to nod its head and fails. It tries to shake its head and fails. Its head ends up doing a strange, jerking diagonal movement that could mean anything. This is... this is... this is not frustrating. And you are not a clever creature, not having rumbled my quandary. Get me? The rat makes a face that says, well, duh. The rat gives you a grave and meaningful look, inviting you to listen carefully. I don't think the problem is in my head, and further to that, I don't think the problem could be unscrambled by the use of sauce. I can categorically state that a short, sharp shot with something of a magical persuasion would absolutely not solve my problem immediately. And I do not invite you to look at the subtext in what I just said. The rat gives you a long stare that tries and fails to say, of course not. The rat breathes a long sigh of relief, closes its eyes, and steals itself for what's coming. Dead. I suspect that's what it wanted all along. around the glowing relic thrums with power as the source barrier quietly crackles in the background. <laughs> 
The hum of the relic grows louder, and bright light starts to spill from its runes. Cracks start to spread across the surface, and it shatters like glass. I heard something. Something seemed to move into place. Gauntlets are cold to the touch. A prickle travels up the back of your neck, warning that you're being watched. Flickers of memory fill your mind. You long for solitude. The subtle scent of parchment wrinkles your nose. Fresh ink stains your fingertips. The memory vanishes, burned away by heat. Ash falls from the sky as a growling whisper addresses you. I see you. And inside you is the strength I've been looking for. Patience. You must prove yourself worthy of such answers. You must find that place of longing in the home of a young scholar. I will draw strength from there to speak again. As the heat around you fades, the desperate memory returns. It claws at you, trying to take hold, then slips away completely.
I see a trap nearby. purple barrier hums as you approach, sealing a chest inside a circle of ancient stones. An unseen force tears at your shoulder. It yanks harder and harder, trying to rip the arm out of its socket. Your mouth tastes like salt and ash. Dark energy set. The arm's every joint snaps rigidly into place. It points into the distance like a compass needle. The lid flies open with a metallic squeal. A one-armed skeleton clad in a pristine coat unfolds himself from inside the chest. He rolls his neck, aligning spine and skull in a long, crackling chorus. <sighs> Speak. Captain Sek Zappa, slaver of the seas, servant of the Source King. Thank you for your help, do I? Now, I'll thank you for your life. I'll have both. Rise, ye dogs! Take this fish to the filleter! Your death is beneath my notice. I'll yield to none! The soul jar pulses with trapped life force. When you touch the glass, your vision wavers. You emerge on the prow of a fine ship. Your armor pulses with enchantment, dominating those who draw near. Your flag flies for Bracchus Rex, a tyrant who traded for your soul. With his power, your flesh and blood is no longer relevant. The vision fades as the soul thrashes, trying to sever your connection. In the end, greed masters you. You seek out the tyrant's vault to retrieve your soul, but Bracchus is ready with a trap. Thus imprisoned, you can only dream about what is out of reach. Your soul and that alluring armor. The vision shatters as the soul squirms away from you, curling up in the bottom of the jar. The soul jar pulses with trapped life force. As the soul spills from the broken jar, the arm in your bag revolts. It clambers out and falls to the floor. Shaking fingers fold into a crude gesture, one final insult before the bones go still. What remains of the outraged soul molds itself into a defiant skull, glowering at you before it vanishes. Snake! Worm! wooden door reeks of salt and seaweed. Not a single nick or gouge mars the detailed face carved across its surface. It also has no lock or handle. But when you run your fingers across the wood, the carved face comes to life. This ship has the claim of a captain. Unless you belong to Sek Zapper, I suggest you leave. We'll see how silly you feel when the cap gets his hands round your throat. Slaver of the Seas. Think he picked that name out of a lucky bag? I be the guardian of me captain's flagship. I'm what stands between dross like ye and his life's work. 
Well, since you are so polite like. No! The door falls silent. Yeah. I've had enough of your yowling. Get along then. Garbage. Welcome, my friend. Enjoy the quiet while it lasts. I know you seek answers. I'll tell you what I can. God woke Gareth pauses. My friend, the Void Woken feast on us. There is no longer a divine to channel the will of the Seven. A new one must rise. Only a God Woken, blessed with the blood of heroes, may ascend to divinity. But few are left. We knew of one, Verdas. He is why we came here. There were others, but they fell like crab apples from their branches. Someone else looks for God Woken, not to liberate them, but to kill them. We just landed on shore. Minutes later, Dallas sailed in on the Lady Vengeance, screaming like a banshee. We had no hope. Most of us were dead in the blink of an eye. She had horrors at her side. Shriekers, they call them. They still protect the harbor, firing pure death at anything that catches their eyes. The Lady Vengeance is still anchored there, too. Lucian, save us from whatever plot Dallas is concocting on it. Well, I had a plan. Gratiana told me of weapons that could counter these shriekers. Purging wands that steal source from its host. I went to that armory looking for one of these wands, but Alexander's bootlickers stumbled in first. I found nothing but dust and blood. We've got to find a way to silence those shriekers. If we do that, the Lady Vengeance is ours. Freedom is ours. You do? But that's incredible! I can only imagine what ghoul-ridden depths you braved to find one. I had no doubt. You bring me hope, sorcerer. I'll gather the other Seekers and travel to shore. Meet us there as soon as you can. Gareth's voice echoes throughout the Enclave with such command, it could rouse a fawn to action. We move, Seekers. Now is the time to resist. The Lady Vengeance will be ours!
I'm glad Han stayed behind. The boy's seen too much horror in his life already. You must help us wage our war. Careful now. That's a trap. That looks dangerous. But maybe I can disarm it. I figured it was only a matter of time. I, I'm ready to pay the price. That's not for me to say. If you must kill me, then kill me. I am... I am not... Yes, I am afraid. I'm always afraid. When the Void Woken came, uh, I was just a boy. My brother was gifted. That's what our parents said. Now they can say nothing. They had no chance against the Void Woken. My brother's so-called gift was only a lure. The order came for me. They kept me safe. I'm not afraid of Alexander. I'm not afraid of death. But I am afraid of you. Of your kind. The Magister's face relaxes for a moment, then hardens once again. You will use any weapon at hand, won't you? Your tongue may sing a lullaby, but it's as deadly as a blade. I would sooner die than put faith in your words, source monster. I'll yield to none. Kerbin stares at the body of his dead comrade, tightly gripping his weapon in a cold fury. Two Magisters will die for every fallen seeker here if I have any say in the matter. We'll find them, or we'll find another way. If I were you, I'd stay close. As you approach, Gratiana turns to you. Her moves are lighter now, 
Her voice is warmer, but still tempered by the scene around her. It would be a sweet joy to see the Magisters chased from this land. But I praise unto the Goddess. As you approach... I'm pleased to... If you ever wish to leave, if the Seekers are to survive, you must use the Purging Wand to... You've come. Lucian be praised. Gareth glances over his shoulder and his voice tightens. The Shriekers keep watch, and their gaze isn't the only one we should avoid. The murderer is here, Alexander. The Butcher's in the ruins, beyond the Shriekers, and he's not alone, as well he wouldn't be. The Order keeps its godwoken leashed. Nothing, as long as those Shriekers stand. Get that purging wand and silence them. If I didn't know better, I'd think the gods themselves were your counsel. He reaches for the wand, but pulls back before touching it. Would that I could aim this wand at Alexander myself, to bleach his soul and sear his skin. No, this thing was birthed from a wicked era. What would Lucian say, seeing me confront one evil with another? Go, take down those Shriekers. Here, look down those steps and tell me what you see. Shriekers, I see flurries and the air drums. Could it be flame? It's him. He has come true to his word. Praise be! You have silenced the Shriekers and cleared our way. Yet it seems I'm in need of you again, my friend. Do you have any more miracles in you? We've got a boat ready to row to the Lady Vengeance. But if Alexander sees us bobbing among the waves, we'll be shark chow. So we split up. I take the Seekers to the Lady Vengeance. You go to the ruins and keep Alexander busy. He'll be expecting a breeze. Show him that you're a hurricane. Are you ready? We've got right on our side. A greater ally than any sulking geist or any whinging magister. He sighs and points a foot towards the harbor. Ha! <laughs> You've kicked up a storm. I can't contain it for long, my friend. Those Magisters are gonna play. I wanna see some guts spilled for what they did to us. Oh, you gave me a fright, Smith. How can I help you? Goodbye. So you think those things down the steps there are dangerous? The ones hanging on the sticks? How dangerous? On a scale of one to... really dangerous? You're trying to put me off, aren't you? Trying to get to the wharf before me, I'll wager. Well, you won't make it. 